day everyone and welcome again to my YouTube channel English One on One where I will be providing you with pertinent information as to how you can get your distinction. Stay tuned and come along with me as I explore the poem Dulcie Decorum S. Objectives of this presentation are as follows. To make students cognizant of the literal meaning of the title of the poem, Dulce A Decorum S. Two, to examine closely the grotesque imageries embedded in this poem. Three, this poem. Three, to analyze the literal devices embedded in the poem. And four, and four, to compare this poem with This is the Dark Time, My Love, and to examine an essay question in relation to these poems. Five, these poems. Five, to provide an outline in relation to how to answer this essay question and to provide a link for a sample essay. Six, last but definitely not no means least to comment on the several lessons that students may learn from these poems english translation of this latin title literally means that it is sweet and fitting to die for one's country however based on the imagery of war painted in the picture to my left and the grotesque imagery of war in this poem, we know that this sentiment is very far from the truth. Hence, the poet Winifred Owen is using the title ironically, as there isn't anything that is celebratory about war. War is definitely not sweet. We will be reading now the first stanza of this poem and let us see if we can identify the images that are somewhat gruesome and pay, or, an, or paints an horrific picture of war. Let's see if you are able to do so. Let's read. Paint double like old beggars under sacks. Knock need, coughing like ads. We curse through sludge, till on the altin flares we turned our backs, and towards our distant rest began to, to strud. Men march asleep, some have lost their boots, but limp on, bloodshot, all went lame, all blind, drunk with fatigue, deaf even to the oots, of tired, outstretched, outstripped, five nines that dropped behind. Are you able to identify the images that paint a gruesome picture of war? Let's see if you were able to do so. I've identified the following images, then go ahead and pat yourself on the shoulders. Bent doubled like old beggars on the sack. Okay, now can you imagine the, the state that these soldiers were in, like old beggars on the sacks? That paints a very horrific picture of war. It paints the, the soldiers as being somewhat looking, somewhat disheveled, haggard, right? Good. And you have not me coughing like hags. So we know that physically they are not well. Okay, good. Right, we curse through the sludge, which means that there is some amount of I don't really want to be here attitude. Okay, right. So they're cursing. They're not happy. They're not pleased. Men march asleep. That means they are so tired. It's feel like they want to rest, but they can't rest because the enemy is on upon them. Okay, good. Many have lost their boots. Huh? But limp on. So they are they are barefooted, but they still have to go on because guess what? It's what it's 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 the survival of the fittest. You have to um trot through dangerous territory or terrains, and so they have to just go ahead, go on, right? Good. But regardless of whether they're they're um they are clothed or not, in shoes or not, but limped on, bloodshot, so they are bloody right they're bloody all went lame 
all blind, drunk with fatigue, deaf even to the hoots. Right? So you notice these images lame, blind, drunk, deaf. Right? And we're going to get into the analysts more of uh, more into that, but don't worry. Okay, but if you have these images, okay, good. If you have identified these, go ahead and pat yourself on the shoulders. Well done. Yes, yes, quick voice. An ecstasy of fumbling. Fitting the clumsy helmets just in time. But someone still was yelling out and stumbling. And floundering like a man in fire or lime. Dim through the misty plains and thick green light. As under a green sea I saw him drowning. In all my dreams before my helpless sight. He plunges at me, fluttering, choking, drowning. Are you able to identify the grotesque images or gruesome images that will paint a negative image of war? If you are able to do so, let me know in the comment section below. Following images highlighted here um, paints a gruesome picture of war. An ecstasy of fumbling fitting the clumsy helmets just in time someone still was yelling out and stumbling and floundering like a man in fire or lime as under a green sea i saw him drowning he plunges at me gluttering choking drowning those are all images that paint a gruesome picture of war were you able to identify those if you were go ahead and pat yourself on the shoulders when we talk about an ecstasy of fumbling we know that they of course it was a surprise attack and so as a result of that they had to move quickly and they were fum fumbling because they had to put on their helmets and you notice the word clumsy helmets just in time right so we realize all of this awkward movement is being portrayed here right but someone still was yelling out and stumbling so it means that someone was unable to put on is gas mass in uh, um in time on time and as a result of that he was plundering like a man in fire or lime okay because he would have inhaled all the toxic fumes right and as under a screen see i saw him drowning he plunges at me gluttering choking drowning so you can actually get a vivid picture see a vivid picture of the command who our, our comrade was unable to put on his gas mask in time and as a result of that he died here is a picture of a gas mask typical gas mask consists of a tight fitting face piece that contains filters and exhalation valve and transparent eyepieces. Now you can just imagine have, having to put on this piece, this mask in, in combat, okay? It would have taken some amount of time, right? And as a result of that, I remember that the soldiers were extremely tired, as was seen in stanza one. Hence, they would have not, not expected this, this um, gas attack, <laughs> may not have been expecting it. And as a result, there was this fumbling, okay, right? Because they knew that if they inhaled the fume, the toxic fume, then they would and it will have caused him. Let's read the third stanza. And the third stanza read In if, if, in some smothering dreams you too could pace behind the wagon that we flung him in and watch the white eyes withering in his face, his hanging face like a devil sick of sin. If you could hear at every jolt the blood come gardling from the fraud corrupted lungs obscene as cancer bitter as the cod of vile incurable sores on innocent tongues my friend you would not tell with such eyes to children ardent with some desperate glory the old lie dulcet decorum s 
for Patria Mori. You have identified, if you have identified the following images, and watch his white eyes withering in his face, his hanging face like a devil sick of sin. You see, like a devil sick of sin, and you know the devil represents, is the epitome of sin. So if the devil is sick of sin, you can just uh, imagine how grotesque his face uh, um, is. Okay, good. Okay. Come guarding from the fraud, corrupted lungs, and note the, the strong diction that is used here, corrupted lungs, obscene as cancer, bitter as the cod, of vile, incurable sores on the innocent tongues. So we see here the, the words that the, the poet uses, conjure up images that are somewhat grotesque, okay, right? And so if you have selected those, lines and then you are on the way to unlocking this poem well done We have examined, now that we have examined the images that are somewhat grotesque in this poem, right? Let us now look at the literary devices that were actually used. Now, one literary device that we saw very prominent in the poem was the use of the simile. And do you remember what a simile is? Now, we said that a simile is a comparison between two unlike term using as or like. Now, in the very first line of the poem, we saw bent double like old beggars under sacks. Now, that's a simile. And of course, what that simile does is that it paints a vivid picture of how this disheveled the soldiers appeared at the time. Okay, good. The second use of the simile is not knee, coughing like hags. And we know what who are hags. If you don't know that, that word first time you're seeing it and you can do some research on it is that so yes and let's see what it is in the comment section below and the third is is hanging face like a devil sick of sin and this is somewhat it's a simile there are se several devices in one here it's a simile but it's also um use ironically it's not so right because the devil is never sick of sin right but of course it's just telling us oh, Peter, a gross test or a gruesome picture of how the the face was okay how it appeared obscene as cancer bitter as a cord of file and of course that's also similar are you able to detect any other devices that the poet used in this poem let's continue Yes, students, you are indeed correct. There is the use of the repetition. Now, we know that repetition is used for emphasis. So in the first example of repetition was the repetition of the word all. All went lame, all blind. So the word all is repeated here to emphasize that all the soldiers Every single one of them were, were extremely fatigued and, and so on, okay? And the second is gas, gas, quick boys. So gas, gas is re repeated, okay, good, right? And then that, of course, it repeated a picture of the invasion of the other party, right? And then we have droning. The word droning is repeated, okay, right? And of course, we have the use of the metaphor. Drunk with fatigue, that's a metaphor, okay, right? And we know that the metaphor here, the use of the metaphor here is a word or a phrase that is not used literally, but figuratively in, it in that it represents something else. So drunk with fatigue would have conveyed the idea of oh, extremely tired that 
um, these soldiers were. Okay, good. As under a green sea, I saw him drowning, right? He's not literally drowning in that he's in a body of water, but he's drowning in that the, the, the gas, the, um, the elements, right, would have intoxicated his lungs. And of course, you know that the green gas out there, everyone is able to see. All the other sage soldiers would have been able to see the green gas. But he is under the green gas, the green sea. So it's not literally a sea in terms of a body of water, but it, the green gas has surrounded him, right? So he is, um, should I say, immersed or submersed in the green gas okay good i saw him droning right this is the inability to help himself he cannot assist himself he cannot swim <laughs> yeah using the word swim metaphorically right but in this sense he, he is actually dying right good so if you saw that well done go ahead and pat yourself on the shoulder are literary devices that the poet may have used in this poem. Now, the first one is the use of alliteration. Are you able to identify examples of alliteration from this poem? If you are able to do so, go ahead and put it in the comment section. On device is the use of onomatopoeia. Were you able to identify words that imitate okay, their sounds? Right? Were you able to, to identify these words? If you were, then place it in the comment section below. Well done. One is the use of the irony or and also the paradoxical statement if you are able to identify the use of the irony or paradoxical statement which we, which i had alluded to earlier then you are on your way to unlocking this poem if you are able to do so please share in the comment section below i trust that this has been beneficial to you Now, students, we are getting to the meat of the matter, okay, right? Now, for paper two of your CSEC English B examination, you are required to write essays, okay, right? And so you know that for the poetry aspect, you have a comparative essay to write. And so we are going to be looking at this essay question in relation to the poem that we have just examined, which is Dulcie A, the Quorum S, and another poem that it can be, this question can be compared with, okay, or paired with. So war has an adverse impact on the environment and on those who engage in war, right? And by adverse, we mean here a negative impact, all right? With reference to two poems that you have studied, Give a brief outline of the impact of war on the environment and the people. Comment on one device from each poem that the poets use to portray this negative impact and state which of the two poems you find more gruesome and justify your selection. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is to pull apart the question, right? And so let's get into that now. Now, the first thing that we are going to do is to decide on the two poems that you will use to answer this question. Have you decided on those two poems? Let's see if we're on the same path. Students, the, the two poems are Dulcie Ed Decorum S and This is the Dark Time, My Love. If you got those, go ahead and pat yourself on the shoulder. So now that we have selected the two poems that we're going to use to answer these questions, let us see the other aspect of the, um, the question that we need to focus on. Let's put it apart. Give a brief outline of the impact of war on the environment and the people. 
right? So for paragraph one, we know that paragraph one is the introductory paragraph, but then we know that in paragraph two, we're gonna briefly outline now the impact of war on the environment and the people in does the ediform s and also this is the dark time my love we're not talking about introductory paragraph talking about paragraph two okay are we all together are you on the, we're on the same page where this is concerned i hope we are okay then the, we are going to comment on one device from each poem that the poet used to portray this negative impact of war, right? And that would have been our third or fourth paragraph, depending on how much we write on the, uh, for our brief outline, okay? So that would be our third or fourth paragraph where we are to comment on one device from each poem that the poet uses to portray this negative impact. Are we seeing that? So we'll pull it apart. We're seeing that that's the other aspect that we need to tackle. All right, good. Finally, we are going to state which of the two poems we find to be more grotesque or gruesome and justify your selection. And by justification, we mean provide reason for your choice. Why have you selected this? Not just to say, I like, I, I think that this is the dark time I love is more grotesque or gruesome, or I think Dulce Edricorum S is more grotesque or gruesome. You need to justify, you need to give no reason for your selection, okay? I trust that this information has been somewhat beneficial. Let's continue to look at now how CXC will mark you for this question. How comparative essays are marked? Now, comparative essays are marked out of 35. 25 marks are allocated to the content or information written and 10 marks are given or allocated for expression and organization. Now, based on the question that we have pulled apart, we are going to see how these 25 marks are distributed. Look specifically at the allocation of marks for content. Now, we, as was discussed earlier, Content is awarded or given 25 marks. And this 25 marks is further subdivided into eight plus eight plus nine, right? Now let us look at, oh, this, these marks are allocated with reference to the question that we have just discussed. Now for the first aspect of the question, with reference to two poems that you have studied, give a brief outline of the impact of war on the the environment and the people, right? That would be eight marks. And that were and that those eight marks are for the two poems, the commentary on the two poems, right? So Dulce Edicorum S will be given four. This is a dark time four. And together those four combined will be given you'll be awarded eight. Okay, depending on how much you not even how much you write, but what you write in response to the, this question, right? Then come Comment on one device from each poem, and note it says one device from each poem that the poets use to portray this negative impact. Now, there are several devices, and I'm sure you're able to tackle this aspect, right? And so your commentary on the device, okay, um, is four, four again, and that will give you your eight marks. Now, here we have the third aspect. State which of the two poems you find find more to be more gruesome and justify your selection. Now the justification of your selection is very important here. So that will be three plus three plus three and that's six marks. So you need to give at least three reasons, right? Valid reasons should be able to sub, sub substantiate these reasons that may provide evidence to support why you have chosen it. Now that we seen how we CXC allocate the marks, I would like you to check the description link for a sample of the essay question. 
check the link students check the link in the description box for a sample essay and if you have found this presentation beneficial remember to like share tell a friend and subscribe and of course remember hit the notification bell so that you will get more informative information on all the poems the csec poems and in addition to that there's information on english language english literature literatures in english and of course communication studies will be on stream i trust that you you have found all the information beneficial may god continue to bless guide and keep you one love now some of the lessons embedded in this poem are as follows one war has adverse effects on those who engage who participate in war and what the quotation that we can use from the poem to support this are all went lame all blind and are drunk with fatigue right and i'm sure you can find other quotations to support this point secondly Appearance is very different from reality. Those who declare that it is sweet and fitting to die for one's country often realize that when faced with the harsh reality of war, that war is never sweet. Okay, it's like the devil's sick of sin, <laughs> right? Good. And then thirdly, things that you have witnessed or experienced can have lasting impact on you lasting impact on your life in all my dreams before my helpless sight notice it says in all my dreams which means that this memory of the friend who was killed in killed as a result of the fact that he did not get his gas mask on in time that memory stayed with him it had a lasting impression on him okay and i'm sure many soldiers can attest to this point that even after war even after combat they, they, they still have the memories that linger and sometimes they have to see counseling because of the trauma that they went through okay so these these are some of the lessons of that are that were embedded in this poem 